Hey, welcome to Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, it's all about improving your ride because we're headed to accelerated technologies to totally geek out on suspension setups and shocks. And we've got the old SRX in the shop here to completely rebuild the front suspension to make that old girl better too. You might want to take some notes, so grab a pen and paper. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris Snowmobiles, together we are born for more. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of trucks for 53 years. Tough, smart, capable. Suspension setups on race cars are an absolute key to success on the track. For a snowmobile, a properly set up sled can not only improve your ride experience, but also make it a safer one. And one of the leaders in the game of snowmobile suspension setups is John Sherrard at Accelerated Technology. Accelerated Technology is a performance-based motorsports company. We kind of take over where the dealer leaves off in terms of uh, making the machine match the customer's expectations. You know, we get a lot of people who will uh, reach out to us, say, hey, this machine's not kind of what I thought it was. Bought a $25,000 side-by-side -side and it rides terribly. I thought when I bought the top shock package, it would ride better than this. Uh, maybe snowmobiles not handling. You know, I, I bought the premium snowmobile package from my dealer and you know I'm not happy with how it's handling, how it's working, feels okay on the bumps, tries to kill me in the corners, what, whatever that is, we kind of we kind of pick up and, and meet the product and, and, and sit down with the customer and, and find a solution, you know, that, that meets their budget and their expectations as best we can. So when we have a customer come in through the door looking for, for improvement, you know, we 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 budget 45 minutes of talking, you know, we sit down and we, 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 we ask them what kind of a rider they, they are. We have a, we, we laugh, we have a scale there, a D-Lyer, we put them on it. We get a footprint of, of who they are and what they want. And then how is their machine not meeting their expectations? What, why did they come to see us? Are they, you know, are they looking for an improvement in, in handling or comfort? Uh, are they uh, looking to do big miles? Are they doing some touring? Did their last machine perform better in a certain set of parameters? Uh, well, we determine why they're here. After doing a couple of seasons of setups, we, we found the customers were coming in with the same questions, the same uh, concerns, the same uh, hesitations, and the same goals, uh, you know, within, a, within some room there. So we, we, we put some information on our website under our snowmobile um, services tab on setups. Um, so we kind of wanted to walk the customer through uh, any level of investment. You know, we have, we have full-blown setups that start for a couple hundred dollars. You know, a customer can come in and we'll, we'll exhaust the setups of, of his, his, his or her current snowmobile. There's, there's no parts involved whatsoever, so we optimize the center shock in terms of limiter strap setting and preload. We set the, uh, the ski shock, you know, preload so that we're getting the ride height that we want de depending on their, the application, whether they're jumping uh, driveways or whether they're groomed trail. And then we go to the back of the machine and we set the torsion springs. So we educate our customers as best we can, as best we have time to do and say, okay, you know, we've got a great setup. It's going to be way, way better than it rolled in here. But this is the next thing that we would do if, if money was no object, just so that they're, they're clear on their expectations when they leave here. And they all are. They, 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 they pick a solution that matches their budget on how much they want to spend on that machine. Maybe it's not a keeper. Maybe it's just got to do one season and then they're, they're, they're trading up. So uh, we, we talk to them about that. And then if they're really looking for a massive improvement, we'll, we'll look at an Elka shock package. 
where now all of a sudden there are no limitations. We can match them with something that's really going to blow them away and give them a safe snowmobile that they can take from a, a rough beat up trail to an ultra smooth, uh, just, just groomed trail and, and give them the performance that they thought they were getting when they bought a new sled. We got into bed per se with Elka 12 years ago on a road racing level where I first was introduced to their product at Shannonville uh, on a CBR 600. But I took the shock out and was blown away with quality of the shock. And it was made in Montreal, you know, three hours down the 401. And we kind of got into snowmobiles back in say 2010. Um, they didn't have a product for snowmobiles at that time. And I was an avid snowmobiler. And I said, hey, you guys are globally dominant in ATV racing. And it's a dual A arm, just has a ski on it, you know, and there says, no, no, we, we're reluctant to get into something and we don't want to do a poor job at it. And I said, okay, I said, I get that. Build me a shock that's 18 inches long with 30 millimeter uh, wide top and bottom mounts, a 10 mil bolt hole, and, uh, and I'll pick the springs. And, and they did, and, and that was the first set of stage fives that came out of that facility. Um, for a vector and I, I put it on my, my machine and was blown away you know by the dramatic increase in pace that I could carry on that machine the stability the safety we preach safety here the safety went up massively on how quickly I could ride that machine and stay in control and then I, I hand built a rear one from motorcycle parts because I got into trouble I could now ride the front of that snowmobile so fast that the rear monoshock skid frame, I, I remember like it was yesterday, I had that machine almost vertical when, when the rear bottomed and kicked and, um, and I came in the shop here and developed the rear shock. And so we then created a monoshock rear and those were some of the first products that Elka created and now they have fitment for, for just about every model on the snow, mountain, crossover, trail, Polaris, Arctic Cat, Yamaha, Skidoo, um, they, they, they've done a fantastic job. So yeah, we, we enjoy a wonderful relationship with Elka, um, but Elka stands head and shoulders in terms of our winter uh, off-road ATV side-by-side -side products. So, so yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. You are so late, you're missing all the fun. Oh, no. You best believe I see it in your eyes. Coming up after the break, we continue the setup with accelerated technologies. So we started riding a long time ago and um, finding the sled that suited my needs at the time uh, was paramount for us. So I had uh, ridden a Vector um, simply because I had a two-up seat on it for the kids and uh, with the power steering it was very nice um, and I, I've moved past that now. Our kids are riding and I want my own sled that's a little bit snappier, lighter, more fun and easier to handle. Uh, so now I have a Skidoo, it's a 2014 TNT 900 Ace. And my initial impressions was uh, it was incredibly quiet. Uh, the motor was nice and smooth. It's got the three different modes, of course. We've got the uh, Eco mode, Standard, and the Sport mode. Um, and um, initially taking it on the snow, I found it was a little bit difficult to turn. I felt very tall on it. Uh, it. It didn't wasn't very confidence inspiring. Um, you could ride it very refined. I could go through the woods with it, um, but I was starting to lose traction in the corners. So we put a stage one package set up. Uh, so we work with the stock suspension. We don't change anything out. We just simply change settings. We change preload. Uh, we may change rear preload as well. Um, and went out and tried that again and it was better. Um, and then uh, we added torsion springs because we found it was squatting too much in the rear. So we went up a rate with our torsion springs, held the back end up a bit, put a little more weight forward, and uh, that made some significant changes. After the changes, uh, it was lighter steering. 
Uh, I could go through the corners much easier. Um, I would find it was a little more compliant on the bumps, uh, but even with those changes that we did make, I still found the front and the rear uh, were not matched up and floating through bumps like I uh, wanted to do. And uh, comfort wise, I could still feel lots of bumps. So I wanted something a little bit more plush, um, but something that can still handle uh, aggressive cornering. So we installed an Elka Pro Kit, which is four stage five shocks, meaning these shocks have uh, rebound adjustability, high and low speed compression adjustability, as well as your preload uh, adjustability. So it is a higher end shock, um, but it gives us all the parameters that uh, somebody who wants to get into tuning can give you. Uh, John tweaked his magic with uh, getting the proper setup and I went out and it was greatly improved. Greatly improved. You know you get a lot of people who uh, who want to go out and they go out with their partner, um, wives, girlfriends and uh, they say oh they're not keeping up you know and then she may get discouraged or just say I don't want to make any changes but once you start initiating and taking care to do a proper setup the ride becomes so much more enjoyable. Um, and this is something that we encourage people to do, not just for yourself, but for the others that you ride with. Um, your family members, they can all benefit from a proper uh, tuning package and uh, make it safer, easier to ride. Uh, again, that, that initial difficulty steering, that tires you out at the end of the day. So if you can prolong your stamina and enjoy your ride for longer, it's, you're just gonna enjoy snowmobiling all together. Coming up after the break, I got some final thoughts on what it's like to ride a machine that's been properly set up. Last year with Snowmobiler TV, we had a brief look at the XRS up in the Halliburton Forest. Uh, beautiful new model from Skidoo. They were debuting the uh, 900 Turbo platform last year which is a great marriage to the, to the XRS plat it's chassis platform, uh, but we found it left room for some improvement. The, uh, the engineering, I think, on that machine is very focused to a big bump sled, and uh, our customers are looking to get around a corner safely and, and have fun at the end of the day without a lot of uh, moments. So it gave us a tremendous opportunity at Accelerated Technologies to fill a void there, to try and, try and see if we could help that machine in particular. And last year in the forest, we, we pulled the limiter strap up a hole, uh, adjusted some preload, um, and made a big improvement, but we could still have gone way further. Um, Gateway uh, Power Sports in Peterborough here has, has given us a beautiful brand new 2020 XRS uh, MXZ uh, 850 to work with and we're going to employ something we developed over the summer here. So we developed a dual spring package for the skis for the Pro 36 KYB shock package and we also developed one for the Pro 40 center shock on the XRS and created a dual spring pack that is light, much lighter initially and uh, that allows us to get low it allows us to get a pretty flat a-arm angle and but whenever you lower the front of the machine you have to address the center or you will worsen that problem it'll pick up on the center even worse so uh, in this xrs we're going to put in an adjustable limiter strap which we sell here which makes trail side limiter strap changes 10, 15 seconds. And that really helps us find the balance of the package. It, it puts uh, you know, the weight on the skis and on the back of the machine where it should be, not on that dreaded center pinpoint. Um, so yeah, that's our plan here is install a dual spring package we got for the XRS on the skis and on the center. Install a limiter strap which allows us to, to put the icing on the cake uh, as the temperature changes. Uh, for the amount of ski bite that we want and we're going to test that and see how see how that goes So oh wow man 
So this is not like the last XRS that I rode, that's for sure. The 900 Ace from last year. Yeah, yeah. Completely different machine now. Oh yeah. Last year we were struggling with going to throttle apex out when the thing, yeah, would pick the inside ski up. Yeah. Didn't have any plant. Uh, went straight great, but didn't get through a corner with a lot of safety. That exactly, we were it was so. unpredictable. Yeah. And it was just standing up so much and we just couldn't get it down. Now, I mean, it's much flatter, corners flatter. Um, I was a little bit worried that you'd take some of the sole out of an XRS by putting a this the spring package in. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, there's a couple of gravity bumps out there that kind of got light going over a hill yeah. and then coming down and like, this is gonna hurt. No, it didn't. Yeah. Like it, it, it soaked up those bumps. So, yeah. you know, somebody who's who buys an XRS for that big bump factor, you know, it's not lost with this spring, but you've got that safety margin now and that predictability on the trail. Yeah, we're just we're 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 dealing with the ride height deal mm -hmm. because when you go to throttle, when you're in the bumps, the skis still open way up. You still have all the travel. We're just starting with this new dual spring rate that we designed. We're starting a lot lower. We're like two, two and a half inches lower at the bumper. Yeah. That flattens the A-arms out and we match that with a spring on the center and it gives it a, like an indie car like front end. You can feel it. I mean, I, I've ridden your sled. Yeah. It's not quite there, but yeah. that's that's quite a bit different suspension because you're yeah. using Elkas over there, a lot more technology and a lot yeah. more tunability yeah. in those shocks. But yeah. this is the stock shock on this thing still yeah. you haven't changed that so yeah. uh, I mean to, to be able to take that stock shock and a new spring package and, and kind of develop this yeah and and now this is handling like a snowmobile should yeah. for somebody who's gonna ride trail that's yeah. for sure yeah and, and but again uh, like I said it didn't lose any of the XRS uh, yeah. sole it's still yeah. there that's what we were trying to do we were trying to make an improvement in terms of uh, a predictability safe cornering and not lose the big bump capability. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're starting with a spring rate that is softer than stock, and then when our dual rate crosses over, it goes significantly stronger than stock exactly. for that last two, three inches. And yeah. that's where you're getting the safety and the, the ability to carry pace. And, and uh, Yeah, you can hit that squared off G out bump hard. Yeah. And it's it, just, it, it takes it. Speaking of taking awesome. it, um, I don't think I'm done riding this thing yet. All right. I can keep going? You can keep going. All right. Yeah. Are, are you sure now? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. All if right, you I'm don't, going. I will. Enough said. All see right. You, see you later, man. Yeah, see ya. Coming up after the break, I'm working on the front suspension of this old girl. Now, come on. Let's go. There you go. Yeah. So we're back in the shop working on the old SRX here and if you've been following along you know this old girl's got just over 18,000 K on the clock and although I'm totally confident with the sled as a whole there's a couple things that are getting a little loose like the front suspension here. The suspension has a bunch of bushings and rod ends that over time all wear just a little bit but taken together all these little areas of wear can add up to a pretty loose suspension. On the ground, you never notice with the sled just sitting there, but as the suspension loads and unloads going down the trail or through the corners, this wear can start to work against you, creating a very dirty, unpredictable feeling snowmobile. On this sled, there's nothing that's really broken or about to fail, just worn out a little bit, and I want to tighten up the feel of the chassis. Now, I ordered all the parts through Kimpex, which had just about everything I needed to replace the problem bushings and rod ends. I'm also going to change out both trailing arms, because these things they're built like pop cans, super strong if there's no damage, but wrinkles like this means they can fold up on even a small hit, causing potentially more damage, so they're going away. Kimpex only had black trailing arms, but each of the stock silver ones had damage anyways, so I'm going to change them both. Now one item I am reusing is the pivot bushing, so to get it out, I'm cutting it out of the OE arm with a death wheel before it hits the scrap bin. Next, the used bushing will have to get pushed into the new arm with a press, which is the only specialized piece of equipment needed for this whole rebuild, although a big bench vise would work as well. I'm also replacing the four upper and lower radius rods, so with the new rod ends installed and the new outer plastic bushings in place, everything gets reassembled back into the chassis. But before going back in, it's a good idea to match the links as close as you can to the original pieces. 
I found these new rods ended up just a bit longer than the original Yamaha ones, so that will have some effect on the geometry and the steering that I'll have to address later. The good thing about this job is that it's pretty basic wrenching and none of the parts are very expensive, but the results can really improve the ride quality of an older, high mile sled like this SRX. And if you order the parts online from Kimpex, they even deliver them right to your door. All right, there we go. All the suspension is back together and it feels a lot better than it used to. Hopefully all the dartiness that we were getting out of this machine is gonna be completely gone. But before it hits the snow, obviously I gotta get the pipes back in, but I also need to check to make sure that the camber is correct and that my toe out on the skis is correct, but that'll be for another episode. Now, figure these things out. <sighs> We've been doing a lot of wrenching this week on STV, which I encourage you all to do because it's a lot of fun. Just remember, anytime you work on your sled, to double check to make sure you got all your fasteners tight because you sure don't want things like your suspension or steering falling apart when you're going down the trail. STV has been brought to you by Ultimax Belts. Performance driven, performance proven. CKX, wear your passion. On Snow Magazine, for snowmobilers, from snowmobilers. Welcome to this week's YouTube comment of the day. And today's comment comes from Tech Stuff. And Tech Stuff writes in and says, open the door and ventilate the shop when running an engine, especially a two-stroke. Breathing in those cancer-causing fumes is just plain stupid and acting as a bad role model for the next generation watching. Then pulling apart a chassis is just plain childish. This isn't up to spec. Behavior for our motorsport YouTube channel, I had to pause in there because he put a period. Uh, this is amateur clickbait. I expected more from your channel. Well, tech stuff. Uh, reading between the lines on that one, I don't think you were that impressed by that episode. But hopefully you continue to tune in because I'm sure we have way more childish stuff to come.